Now for the posterior part of the body. What we're going to start with is the trapezius. This is the most superficial muscle um, in the upper back. So the origin is actually the occipital pro, um, protuberance right up here, occipital ridge area. And actually um, the spinous process of C1 through T12. Okay, so the, mo the one you can actually palpate the best is C7. So that's where you can kind of map it out then, okay? So it's the vertebrae C7 right here. And C1 and C2 you really can't palpate at all. So it's actually underneath the skull region. But that's where you can actually start palpating going down. So you can actually locate all the way down to T12. So a good way to remember the vertebrae is 7, 12, and 5, the times you could eat. So 7 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar then. So let me kind of map it out for you. It kind of goes out like this, and then down like this then, okay? And some people call this the clothes hanger muscle. Just because it kind of looks like you can actually hang clothes on it. So again, with all the muscles, they're actually equal on both sides. So actually, when you cut it down the center like this, actually, this is one, okay, of course, and then this is the other one. So whenever we're talking about the muscles, um, there's always one on the other side too, so you want to make sure you treat those regions. So for the trigger points um, for the trapezius, one that you can actually do is you can actually pinch right in the, sh right in the shoulder region or you can kind of, kind of friction off that or you can go cross fiber friction too to locate that region. Because insertion for the trapezius is the lateral uh, one third of the clavicle. So the, the clavicle is actually over here and the chromium process in the spine of the scapula. So the spine of the scapula, as you can see, I'm kind of rolling over this region here. So this is the vertebral border right here. So this is the most medial. And this is the axillary border here. Inferior angle of the scapula. Superior angle of the scapula. And again, spine of the scapula. So the actions for it, for the upper, um, it's basically broken down to three, but again, some books will actually just call it one for the trapezius. So the upper, it extends the head, so it brings the head back, and elevates and laterally rotates the scapula. The middle one, all it basically does, it retracts the scapula, so it brings the scapula back this way. And then the lower, it depresses and laterally rotates the scapula for the actions. So for the trigger points, if you were going to go go really deep in these regions, you're more likely not on the trapezius because this is, again, more su superficial muscle. And cadavers, it's actually a really thin muscle too. So what you want to basically do is find the superior angle of the scapula, right here. And then there's basically three of them. And these can actually go up the neck and the back of the head too for the, for the referral regions. So that's the typical referrals for those areas. Then there's also ones you want to feel the vertebral border of the scapula. So there's only one trigger point on, it's like halfway. So the um, superior angle of the scapula, inferior angle of the scapula, halfway. There's just one right in that region. And then, and then the other ones are just off of it. But again, if you're going really deep in that region, more than likely you're not on the trapezius at all then, okay? So this is a um, big one that can actually more with a stick, stiff neck um, and also the levator scapula, we'll get to that one too. And also the sternocleidomastoid, we went over that one, it can actually cause problems with like a stiff neck. And then also it can mimic um, kind of headaches too. There's also a lot of people get headaches right in the back region. So if you think you're going too deep, actually just go at an angle, kind of locate those trigger points on, okay? For the suboccipitals, this is a huge one for headaches. And Jenna Travell, she actually calls this one the ghost headache muscles. So what you want to do with this one is actually feel the vertebrae. And of course it's not on the vertebrae, but you feel this occipital ridge. You got to kind of hook underneath of it. That's for one of the major trigger points for the suboccipitals. And the referral can actually go around their head in a pattern of where you would have your sunglasses on. So they'll just go actually around 
right to the side of the eye for the typical referral for the, for the suboccipitals. And the origin is below the spinous process, C2, posterior tubercle, and then also C1, and then spinous process, C2, and then also transverse process, C1. The insertion is a suboccipital bone, and the transverse process, and C1. And the major actions are extension, lateral flexion, and rotation of the head. So the, those are the major action, actions of it. So just make, and then there's also three actually on the suboccipital ridge. So it's basically here, here, and here. But one, again, you kind of kind of hook underneath the suboccipital ridge. The other three are just above that then. So again, all three of those actually have the same referrals uh, like sunglasses then. So the, again, be aware of the suboccipitals um, when somebody comes in with headaches. So a lot of times you can help them with that area then. Levator scapula. So what you want to basically do with that is the origin is the transverse process of C1 through C4. But you remember C1 and C2, you really can't palpate at all. But um, C3 um, and th C4, you can kind of. But the insertion is actually the superior angle of the scapula. So you want to feel the superior angle of the scapula. Kind of go up from there. So the major action is it elevates and retracts and immediately rotates the scapula. So for locating this one, this is a deeper than the trapezius muscle. So again, the trapezius is most superficial, then the levator scapula just underneath that one. So that's where you actually want to palpate. So it's actually the superior angle of the scapula, one, two, three for trigger points. So not all the way up to the suboccipital ridge, but again, it's deeper than the trapezius then. So this is a really big one for um, pain when you're sitting at a computer desk all day long, you're having those kind of problems. Um, those areas get elevated a little bit when you're under stress. Um, you're going to run into that area that's really tight. But that's a major uh, muscle that actually elevates, brings up the shoulder then. That's the levator scapula. Okay, next one is the splenus cervicus. The way I kind of um, have people remember this is splenus cervicus curvicus, so it kind of actually curves. So the origin is the um, T3 through T6. So it goes here, and then it goes kind of an angle and kind of curves around to C1 through C3 transverse process. So it goes a little bit closer to the vertebrae. So it, again, it kind of goes up and kind of angles and back back in. And bilateral contraction and hyperextension of the head. So those are the two major actions of the splenus cervicus. So the splenus cervicus is, you remember the levator scapula right here, the superior angle of the scapula. Just go a little bit in and those are the trigger points. There's actually two of them for the splenus cervicus. And that pain can just refer right around that area for the splenus cervicus. And another referral um, at the lateral side of the eye, so just right at, just lateral to the eye, just in that area. But you remember the suboccipitals, it's, it's like a band, like um, your sunglasses. But the splenus cervicus, it'll just right in that area for the lower one and the upper one, um, it will actually go around um, right to the side of the eye then for the referral. But again, splenus cervicus, um, another way to splenus cervicus curvicus because it kind of curves then. Okay. Next one is splenus capitis. Splenus capitis, the nice thing about this one, it actually explains where the referral is in a way. So splenus capitis, cap, top of the head. So it'll actually go right to the top of the head. So for the splenus capitis, you got to feel the suboccipital ridge, um, feel the vertebrae but actually go out about two inches and about an inch down or so. That's where you're going to locate that trigger point. And that trigger point will actually go again to the top of the head. So the origin is the spinous process um, C7 through T3. And then it actually goes, the insertion is mastoid process 
or the mastoid process, and then searching for the sternocleidomastoid, and also a sub uh, and also occipital bone for the insertion. The action is bilateral contraction, hyperextension of the head. So those are the major ones. So again, if somebody comes in with pain on the top of their head, that's where you're going to have to locate um, the splenus capitis then. Semispinalis capitis. This one, um, you have to actually push into the vertebrae. So um, just be careful. You got to do this really slow. So you feel first one. You want to feel the suboccipital ridge, and just um, like C3, C4, right around there, you're going to have to actually push into the vertebrae, and the referrals can actually go to the back of the head, and then and it can actually wrap around like a headband. So it's a little bit higher than the suboccipital referral. So again, you have to push into the vertebrae, but that's where a lot of people get headaches too. But again, make sure you're doing it really slow when you're performing that, just to be safe then. Rhomboids, the average person might know about the rhomboids. So some people actually classify the rhomboid minor, major, but some people just incorporate them both together, just the rhomboids. So the rhomboids, um, the action, remember C7, that's the one you can actually palpate the easiest. Then it goes down to T5. And then it goes, the insertion, the vertebral border of the scapula. So it kind of goes like a Christmas tree. So that's kind of like a Christmas tree muscle. So that's what you can remember, it kind of the shape the direction of the Christmas tree. And the major action it elevates, retracts, and medially rotates the scapula. The major action is it retracts, so it brings the scapula kind of back then, okay? So that's the major action of that. And um, again, the, the trapezius is the most superficial muscle in the upper back region, then it goes to rhomboids. But what you want to do to actually locate this one, you want to feel the vertebral border of the scapula and there's actually three trigger points. But again, if you're going extremely deep all the way down to the ribs, you're not hitting the romb you're actually going right through the rhomboids then for the trigger points. And the referral will just go around this area right here. And with rhomboids, um, a lot of times they're overstretched just because the pectoralis area is actually internally rotated too much. So it actually is kind of rotated more like this. But uh, again, the rhomboids will actually retract, bring it back like this, but as you can see, those areas get stretched out a lot. Of. So you don't necessarily have to stretch those a lot to most people. So you can actually just do some massage and relaxation in the rhomboid region. The, the rhomboid minor is the upper one. It's a little bit small, smaller, but the way you can remember that is rhomboid minor, and rhomboid major. Major supports minor, so it's kind of holding minor up if you want to remember it that in that direction. The supraspinatus. The supraspinatus is the first sits muscles. Okay, with the sits muscle, um, it's the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis, the rotator cuff muscles. But it's a lot easier way, way to remember them as sits. So the supraspinatus, um, the origin, is a supraspinatus fossa of the scapula, that little groove. So you want to basically feel the spine of the scapula here, kind of roll over it and that, that groove there. But if you can't feel it on some people, just have them actually elevate their shoulder to their head. Sometimes you can get in that groove a little bit easier. But that's the actual location of the trigger points for the supraspinatus right in there. And then the insertion actually goes the greater um, tubercle of the humerus. So it goes in this path. But again, you want to feel the spine of the scapula and it's nothing um, posterior to that at all then, okay? So the major action is abduction and stabilization of the humerus. So it's one of the main stabilizers right here. And then also abduction just brings the arm straight up like that. And this is the major one um, when somebody has rotator cuff problems um, that you want to concentrate on a little bit more. 
and again you're gonna, just going to have to go a little bit slow and it's it's kind of hard to do a cross fiber friction in that region so you might want to just do longitude with the muscle grain just to be safe then. So again supraspinatus that's the first rotator cuff muscle so, and the typical referral you can just refer around that area and also down to the elbow region so those are the typical referrals for the supraspinatus. Okay, infraspinatus. The infraspinatus, um, there's actually right on the scapula. So you feel the spine of the scapula and there's four trigger points right actually on the scapula then. So with this, you can actually do, um, again, the muscle grain kind of goes like this. You can actually go cross fiber friction and a lot of times you can actually feel that pretty good. But just be careful, just because you're pushing down on the bone, you're more likely to bruise that area. So you might have to go a little bit of angle, so you're less likely to actually bruise it then. So the origin is the infraspinatus fossa of the scapula. So it's the lower two-thirds portion of the scapula. And then the insertion is the greater tubercle of the humerus. So it actually goes over here then. But all four trigger points are actually right on the posterior part of the scapula, the lower, lower two-thirds of it. And the referral goes over the anterior deltoid um, bicep region. And um, just make sure, um, remember the trapeze is the most superficial, and then it goes to infraspinatus for the next layer for those, those areas. Teres minor. The origin is a, a superior lateral border of the scapula, right up in this region here. And then the insertion is greater tubercle of the humerus. And the major action is the abduction, so it brings the arm straight up, and lateral rotation of the shoulder, so it kind of brings it back then, okay? So that's the major actions of the teres minor. And the referral it just goes right around the area so it's not a huge referral area so basically right on that area so again remember 75 percent of the time if you're treating the area that they're having pain you're in the wrong area but for this one of course it's right in that region where it's going to refer then For the subscapularis muscle, it's part, the last part of the sits, so it's the last S. So you remember supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. So with the subscapularis, what you want to, um, the, the origin is actually the anterior surface of the scapula. So it's on the anterior part of the scapula. And the insertion is lesser tubercle of the humerus. So it kind of wraps around underneath over here then, okay? So that's insertion, and the action is at immediately ro rotation of the humerus. So it goes like this. So it brings it closer together then. So with the trigger points for this one, what you want to basically do is find uh, the, um, the scapula right here. Put your fingers, and you can horizontally adduct and kind of slip underneath there to get the trigger points. So you've got to horizontally adduct. You can actually perform this one supine too. But just make sure you, your fingers kind of ride the, um, the posterior part of the ribs here. So just make sure you do that then. So the typical referral for the um, subscapularis is around the scapula region and then also around the posterior part of the wrist. So that's the typical referral for the subscapularis. And this is a big one for frozen shoulder syndrome. So when they have a hard time lifting up their arm or moving their arm a lot, um, you might want to concentrate on the subscapularis. So again, you can perform the supine too or prone, so both positions. The serratus anterior. The serratus anterior is the origin is the um, one through eight ribs, okay, and then the insertion is the anterior aspect of the tibial border of the scapula. So right around this region. 
So what you want to basically do to find the trigger point, you want to find the inferior angle of the scapula. Just go like an inch down, a couple inches in. So right in that region. And this is a big one. It feels like kind of a stitch in your side. Really tight um, when you are having problems um, with this muscle. Also, there's a thing when there's a weakness in it, it's called wing back, where the scapula actually kind of sticks out, even especially when they're walking, the scapula sticks out a lot. So again, the referral is just right around here, and it can also go around this area too. So just make sure you're aware of this muscle then for anything on the side of the body then. Teres major, that's just below that. So the teres major, easy way to remember this is the teres minor, teres major, latissimus dorsi, once we get to those for the trigger points. So the teres minor, then the major, major supports minor, just like the rhomboids, rhomboid major supports rhomboid minor. So the origin is the inferior half of the lateral border of the scapula, right here and the medial lip of the bicepital groove of the humor. It actually kind of wraps around underneath. So it actually wraps around underneath over here. So remember the teres minor is the posterior for the insertion and the anterior for the teres major. So it, you make sure you're not pushing right on the scapula and if you need to you can actually go in here and actually kind of pinch this area to locate the teres major region. And that's a bit, little bit bigger referral, so it can actually go around the posterior deltoid referral area. So the posterior deltoid and also the teres major kind of have the same referral in that region. So the actions that it extends, medially rotates, and adducts the shoulder, okay? So the, again, with the teres major, the actions, once we get to the lats, um, it actually has the same actions as the teres major then. So their the, um, insertion is actually really close to the other then. Serratus posterior superior. Okay, the trick with this one is you have to actually go underneath the superior angle of the scapula right here. And the origin is a nuchal lig ligament and spinous process of C6 through T2. And insertion is the posterior aspect of um, the 2 through 5 ribs. So it's the deepest muscle in this region. So remember the trapezius, one layer, next layer, rhomboids. Deepest layer is the serratus posterior superior. So to actually locate that one, you have to elevate and kind of hook underneath the superior angle of the scapula to really get in that region. And you can, if you can't get underneath somebody's scapula, you want to bring the arm off the table like this and have them horizontally adduct. See how it rotates, pushes it away? See how it pushes it? So you can actually locate the serratus posterior superior for that. And the referral, it can go... Um, to their elbow region, even their pinky region, and it can actually refer around, right around the actual trigger point area, and also in the teres minor um, referral right in that area. So the serratus posterior superior, just because it's um, connected to the ribs, remember it's considered more of a breathing muscle. The latissimus dorsi, it actually starts in um, T7, iliac crest region, lower ribs, inferior angle of scapula, so all those areas, and also aponeurosis region, okay? So it actually starts in that, that area, and it actually kind of goes up, and then it actually will go kind of hook around underneath over here then, okay? So it's really close again to the insertion of the teres major then. So the insertion again, the bicepital groove of the humerus. And it, again, it has the same actions as the teres major, extension, adduction, and medial rotation of the humerus. So just make sure you're aware of those areas then um, for the lats. 
So again, the teres minor for the trigger point, teres major, there's two of them, and the lats, the upper one, you really have to pinch right at this region here, the lower portion. So that one can actually go around the inferior angle of the scapula for the referral. And for the lower trigger point for the lats, you're going to have to actually find um, the floating ribs and just go up a couple inches. And remember, you really don't want to push straight down on especially the floating rib region. Go more of an angle to actually locate that trigger point. That should just go down for the referral. And some pe people call this the swimmer's muscle um, just because in swimmers it's really well defined. And major action is actually extension, the humerus, so it just brings it back so when you're swimming. And it's also considered the widest, um, widest muscle too, so it's really wide. And up here, the trapezius actually covered a little bit. So in the lower region, it's the most superficial, um, the lats is. So when we get to the other muscles, like the quadriceborum, uh, the serratus posterior inferior, those are actually underneath the latissimus dorsi in that area. Okay, next muscle is the quadrus laborum. This one, um, some people call it the hip hiker because it actually elevates, raises the hip right in here. And the origin is actually posterior iliac crest, so the iliac crest right here. And the insertion is uh, rib 12 and also transverse process of um, lumbar 1 through 4. So again, raises hip, bilateral contraction, hyperextension of lumbar spine, and lateral flexion of trunk. So those are the major actions of the quadriceborum. So for the or, um, out, outer trigger points for the quadriceborum, you can actually just place your hand here and have them um, just try to lift up their hip. Okay, so you can actually feel that muscle contracting then, okay? So you actually can push in to the vertebrae right in that region then, okay? So you wanna make sure you don't push down right in there just to be safe, just because for the kidneys, so you're not pushing down right there. So you're just going to push right into the, the um, quadriceborum, the QL, some people call it. So there's actually two trigger points, and that will actually refer more to the lateral side of the glute region. And for the uh, medial trigger points, there's two of them. So again, make sure you don't go higher than L1 right in this region. So you can actually kind of push straight down right here because it's just off the vertebrae. So the referral will actually go right to the sacrum region and a little bit up here for the um, typical referral. But this is a big one for kind of lower back problems. Just because, um, especially if you're doing a lot of stair climbing, uh, hiking, you name it, um, but it's gonna get more, more contracted for the quadriceborum. So again, if you need to, you can have them contract that region um, just so to make it a little bit easier then, okay? So for the quadriceborum, um, quad meaning four, four kind of um, sections of it, but it's actually just one muscle then, okay? And it also means um, square shaped and loins. So that's uh, what quadriceborum actually means then. The longissimus, okay, so for the longissimus, it's C, C4 through C7, transverse process for the origin, and then, and then also T1 through T4, transverse process, and then T1 through 5, um, thoracic lumbar fascia, transverse process of the lumbar vertebrae. The insertion is the posterior process of the mastoid process, so remember mastoid process up here, and transverse process C2 through 6, and then also um, transverse process of T1 through T12, and posterior surface of lower 10 ribs. And then the action, it fills ribs outwards and down and opposes diaphragm. So the longissimus, it will just refer around that area. So what you want to basically do for that one is you can actually kind of push into the vertebrae a little bit to locate those. So the first one you want to find the inferior and superior angle of scapula 
and then halfway go over and kind of push into that region. And then you can also find the floating ribs area and it's just above the floating ribs but you can actually kind of push into the vertebrae also again then, okay? So that's more of the longissimus. Um, so like right in that little crevice there then, okay? And then for the iliocostalis, the origin is the splenous process T12 through L5, so more in this region. And posterior angle of the ribs, 7 through 12, and then posterior angle of the ribs, 3 through 6. And the insertion is posterior angle of um, 7 through 12 ribs, angles of 1 through 6 ribs, and transverse process C4 through C6. So that's insertion for that, and the action is bilaterally, an extension of the spine, unilaterally, laterally flexes the spine, and stabilization of the spine. So the iliacus, um, iliacostalis, you want to kind of feel that ropey band, so that's where it's actually located at. So again, the longissimus is a little bit closer to, and then the actually ropey band is actually the iliacostalis. So the iliacostalis for the referral, this upper one, and it can actually go around the inferior angle of the scapula. And the lower one, there's actually two lower ones. So you want to feel the floating rib region, and also on the ropey area, you can push straight down or you can push at an angle if you think. But if you're going to push, make sure you push kind of away from the spine so you're not going to slip at all. So the referrals for these areas can actually go out a little bit and then also to the glute region for the referrals for the iliocostalis. So that's for the more of the rector muscles here. For the triceps brachii, the origin is the infra glenoid um, tuberosity of the scapula, proximal one half of the posterior humerus right in this area and distal two-thirds of the po posterior humerus. Um, the insertion olecranon process of the ulna, so the elbow region, so that's where the, the insertion is, and then the action extension of the elbow. So extension of the elbow, so this is flexion like this, so this is extension, okay? so. The referrals for this, what you want to basically do is you can right in the center of the belly of the muscle, you can actually pinch these two areas, and the outer one will just refer right here, and the um, medial one will actually refer up in this region here. So more of the teres minor for the referral, so as you can see that area has a lot of different muscles that actually refer to that region. And then there's also three other trigger points for the triceps. So you feel the elbow right here, just go like a half an inch up or so. So that one should just go down a little bit for the referral. And this, and then there's ones here and here. So basically here, here, and here for the three trigger points in this lower region. This one here will actually go in the um, medial epicondyl region. This one here will go to the lateral epicondyl region. This one will just go straight down. So again, there's five different trigger points um, for the triceps brachii. So um, again, why they call it triceps? Because there's actually three origins. So it's not actually three muscles, it's just three origins. Um, so it can actually mimic um, um, tennis elbow. You remember our lateral epicondylitis? So a lot of tendonitis problems right in this region, so it can actually mimic, and also medial epicondylitis too, so golfer's elbow. So it can mimic those kind of problems then. This is where it gets a little bit difficult to find these trigger points here. Okay, for, for the extensor carpi radialis longus, um, the extensor carpi radialis longus, basically what you want to do, you remember when we had them an, um, on the anterior portion of the body, brachioradialis, the muscle we actually pinch. So what we actually got to do for this one is the origin is the distal one-third of the um, supracondylar ridge of the humerus. So it's right up in this region, and the insertion is the dorsal surface of the base of the second uh, metacarpal, so down this region. So again, it kind of explains where it's at, extensor, carpi, radialis, longus. Extensor is extends, 
carpi, um, carpal region, radialis goes down the radial side, and long is because it's long. So what you want to basically do for this one is find the, um, you want to find the brachioradialis, and it's just a little bit over that. You've got to kind of hook under the brachioradialis to locate that trigger point. So extension carpi radialis longus, the referral should actually go right down to this region. For the, that's the typical referral. So again, the actions are extension and abduction of the wrist. So extension of the wrist is like this, and abduction goes like this then. So it's on the radial side. So remember anatomical position. So, so again, it could just go around that area or down to this region for the typical referral. Next one is uh, extensor carpi ulnaris. Um, extensor carpi ulnaris. So that one actually, um, the origin is lateral epicondyle of the humerus. So remember, most of the extensors start right, right around this region, so it's a little bit easier for you to remember. Then it goes down to the lateral dorsal side, the base of the fifth metacarpal. So it goes down to here, but it kind of curves over. So again, brachioradialis, extensor carpi radialis longus, and then ex extensor carpi ulnaris, you've got to kind of push into the ulna to get that um, trigger point. So with the extensor carpi um, ulnaris, so it will go to this referral right in here. So just remember, it, it's kind of easy to remember just because the ulna bone, so it goes to the ulna because the extensor carpi ulnaris, and then extensor carpi radialis longus, it goes to the radial side then, okay? So that's, it actually tells you where it's at then. Um, then the extensor carpi radialis brevis, Remember with brachioradialis here, um, you got a um, hook underneath the extensor carpi radialis longus, and then just go a little bit inferior, and you still got a kind of hook underneath of it, but that's where that trigger point is too. But that one will actually just go to the back of the hand for the typical referral for that region then. So um, extensor carpi radialis brevis, it's a lateral um, epicondyle of the humerus, and then the dorsal surface of the base of the third metacarpal, and then also extension of the wrist. So it's just extension of the wrist. So it has nothing to do with um, abduction at all then. So next one, enconius. So what we're going to do for this one is the origin is the lateral epicondyle, the humerus. So right over here. And insertion, olecranon process, the ulna. So right over here. So just inferior, just a little bit lateral, that's where the anconius is. So the anconius is you just refer right around that region. And the major action is extension of the elbow. So um, the other muscle that actually extends, um, you remember the triceps then. So those are the two major ones that do extension then. With the extensor digitorum, what you want to basically do for that one is find the ulna bone here, the one that sticks up. For the elbow, go about three inches down, and it's one on each side then. So one on each side for the extensor digitorum referrals. So the referral, it could, could go up in this region. So, and then it can also go down to here. So those are the typical referrals for extensor digitorum. Next, for the extensor indices, indices actually means index. So the origin is just a one third of the posterior ulna. So right around here. So you, what you want to basically do is in between the radius and the ulna, that's where the trigger point is located. It's extensor expansion of index finger. So the action is extension of index finger. So it just brings it up like this. So if you're in the carpal region, go up a couple inches and just right in between the radius and the ulna. And if you need to, you can actually have them move their finger around or tense their finger up. So remember, if you're ever in any kind of problems locating the muscles, have them tense it up. Cross fiber friction works really well for right in those, those areas then. Okay, now for the glute region, there's actually four main muscles that we're going to be concentrating on for this area. 
So the first one is the gluteus maximus. And the origin is the posterior gluteal line of the ilium and the iliac crest too. And also the posterior inferior surface of the sacrum and the coccyx. So the sacrum right here, coccyx, that bone, the tailbone right there. And the insertion is the iliotibial tract of the TFL. So it actually goes over right over here then, okay? So it inserts. So the action is extends and laterally rotates thigh and also helps support the knee just because it connects down to this region here. So the gluteus maximus, um, the trigger points, there's, there's one that's you actually have to feel the coccyx. So what you're actually going to do is you're going to going to push up here, you're going to push into the sacrum to start with. Push in the sacrum, push in the sacrum, and once you kind of feel that little hook, that's right underneath there, and that's you got to kind of hook in that area, and that, that referral should actually just go up a little bit. And the next trigger point for the gluteus maximus, you know, the, the coccyx and the top of the sacrum, about halfway, you're going to kind of push into the sacrum. And that referral can actually go around this region and also down in here then. And then there's also another one. This is the ischial tuberosity. This is called the sit bone. Okay, so right in that region, just a little bit above it, and that referral can actually go around this area then. Okay, so those are areas you want to concentrate on um, if they do have any pain down in this region then. So again, for the gluteus maximus, and that's the biggest muscle in this area, and it's also the most superficial too. So it goes gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and then piriformis is the last one. So again, the gluteus maximus is the biggest, and most people believe it's about an inch thick at least, so it's one of the thicker muscles in your body then. So that's why you got to use a little pressure to actually palpate the gluteus maximus then. The gluteus medius, it's more up in this region here for the trigger point regions. So the origin is the iliac crest and external surface of the ilium. And the insertion is lateral surface of the great, greater trochanter. So the major actions is the abducts the thigh and immediately rotates the hip. So there's actually three different ones. Again, you feel the iliac crest here. Just go a little bit inferior. So here, here, and here. This last one you can actually push into the sacrum region to locate that one. But um, these will actually refer around the lower back region. So for, for this trigger point, the more medial one. And also for here, we'll go around to this area too. And this outer one will um, actually go more out in this area. So again, this is a big one for low back problems. So you might want to actually... Um, a lot of times when they come in for half an hour massages, they're only working just on the back area, but just have, if they have their pants on, just tell them to pull it down a little bit so you can access the gluteus medius if you're not getting any benefit from the lower back area to massage. The next one is the gluteus minimus. The gluteus minimus is uh, the origin is the external surface of the ilium and the anterior portion of the iliac spine and the ASIS, anterior superior iliac spine. And the insertion is the anterior border of the greater trochanter and it adducts and immediately rotates the hip. So the way to actually locate that is you actually want to lift up the foot. So I'm going to lift up the foot. And as you can see how it rotates around like that, you feel the head of the greater trochanter. So for the first trigger point, you're going to feel the head of the greater trochanter going up about an inch, and that's where that first one is. And for this one, the typical referral will actually go down the lateral side of the leg, so it can actually mimic sciatic problems. And the next one for the trigger point is actually right in the center of the glute. And this one will actually go down the posterior part of the legs for the typical referral. So again, it can mimic sciatic problems, but it's basically right in the center. So just make sure you're not put anything close to the sacrum. Make sure you're not anything close to the greater trochanter region. Just
just right in the center. Next one is the piriformis. This is the big one for, um, sometimes it can impinge the sciatic nerve. So you're gonna run into problems with that then. So again, you're gonna lift up the leg, you can rotate it back and forth. You feel the greater trochanter and it's just right on top of there. Make sure you're not putting pressure right on the greater trochanter at all. So you can roll, it's a, it's a ball and socket right there. So you're gonna push there, then it'll actually refer right around that area. So that's just if it's muscle, but if it's um, the sciatic nerve impinging, it'll actually go down the leg then. So that's the difference between those two. But the piriformis is, um, it's a deep um, lateral rotator of the hip then, okay? So like, just like I showed you on the anterior portion of the body, and again, that's right, right above the greater trochanter is one, and then you have to actually kind of go at it, go over here and push in the lower portion of the sacrum. That's where the other trigger point is for the piriformis. And for the piriformis, for this trigger point, it'll just kind of go around this area too. So if it's muscle related, it'll just go around that area, but if it's actually nerve, it'll go down the leg. But you gotta make sure you locate it just right because remember the gluteus minimus, it's an inch above the greater trochanter, um, will go down the lateral side of the leg and right in the center of the glute will actually go down the posterior part of the leg for the actual muscle related. Okay, with the hamstrings, a lot of people believe there's just one muscle here, but there's actually three. So the biceps morris is the first one we'll be talking about. The origin is actually the issue tuberosity and linea aspera of the femur. And the insertion is the head of the fibula, so it actually goes down to this region. So the reason why they call it biceps again is there's two origins. It's not two muscles for that. So for the biceps morris, you want to basically find the head of the fibula here, go up a few inches, one inch, a little bit medial, so that's where the first referral is right there, okay? The first, first trigger point. But the referral should just go around this region, and then go up a few inches from there, and that's another trigger point. So there's basically two trigger points for the biceps morris, and they're more lateral. So just make sure if you're on the lateral side of the leg, um, when the post to your side, um, it's on the lateral side then. The semi-tendinosis and semi-membranosis, that also, um, the issue tuberosity, that's where it actually starts. And insertion is the medial proximal tibia. So it actually goes down this way then, okay? So the semi-tendinosis and membranosis, they both have the same origins, insertions, and same actions. So again, the hip extension and flexes the knee. So those are two um, actions of the semi-tendinosis and semi-membranosis. So with these, these are the medial trigger points. Um, these will actually re refer around this region here. Okay, so that's what a typical referral is for that then. So you can actually kind of feel that ropey band. And again, if you can't feel it, have, hold down their foot and I'm trying to lift it up. And it kind of tenses up. And so then also the biceps morris usually sticks out pretty good too um, when you actually hold that down. So again, when cross fiber friction, works a lot better for those regions. So there's actually um, four different trigger points for those regions. So you remember, don't go totally medial there because remember that's a gracilis, okay? So this is the semitendinosis, membranosis, both those kind of lumped together. And then of course the biceps morris over this region. Um, ischial ramus and ischial tuberosity. So right up in this region, and then the insertion is linea aspera, medial condyle ridge, and the adductor tubercle, the medial femoral condyle. So the major actions is adduction of the thigh, anterior fibers flex and medially rotate, and posterior fibers extend and laterally rotate. So um, adductor magnus, more right in this region here, so what you're going to basically do to this one is actually find it, is hold down the foot, have them lift up, 
have them lift up their foot, okay, and I'm kind of tense it up. So again, the biceps morus is over here, semitendinosus, membranosus, and it's basically directly right in the center. So there's two trigger points directly right in the center. So when you feel that little divot there, that's how you locate that, and that can actually refer to this area, and also the anterior part of the thigh. And the one that's the ischial tuberosity, and you, you remember um, the gluteus maximus is just above the ischial tuberosity, but just below that, that's uh, adductor magnus trigger points too. So there's two of them down here, and two of them are in the center. And the upper one will actually go to the more the sacrum region or the bladder region on the anterior portion. That's where we technically refer them. So again, make sure you go right in between. It's basically directly in the center, but it is accessible on the anterior portion, but it's a lot easier on the posterior portion to get the trigger points that way then. The plantaris, the origin is a sup superior lateral femoral condyle, so right around this region, and the insertion is the posterior calcaneus Achilles tendon, so it actually goes down to this region here, and it's a really deep muscle, and the plantaris, the easiest way to actually locate that one is lift it up, and you have to actually pinch in here, but if you feel a really, really tight bands on the lateral and medial side, that's the tendons for the, the hamstring muscles. So you have to go in between that and actually pinch. So again, that's an danger in sight, so you don't want to actually push straight down then. So you actually lift it up and pinch right behind there for the plantaris. And the referral will just go around that area for the plantaris, and some people don't even um, have that muscle. So the action is it actually plantar flexes the foot, so plantar flexing, so when it goes like this, so and then um, it also assists and um, knee flexion then, okay? So it brings it up like this then, so it helps out. But the major action is plantar flexion like this then. So the popliteus, the next muscle, you want to basically find the pop, um, popliteal fossa region right here. Go an inch down, directly straight. That's the popliteus. That's, the origin is the lateral condyle of the, the femur. So remember lateral is the outside. So it actually starts over there, and the insertion is posterior surface of the proximal tibia over here. So um, the action is um, leg flexion by unlocking the knee. So it actually helps unlock the knee, so it helps um, flex in that region. So again, the popliteal fossa region, just an inch down, and it's okay to push straight down for here, but you remember for the plantaris, you gotta kinda pinch, but flex the knee and pinch in that region then. And so in the referral will just go right around that area for that region then. The next one is the tibialis posterior. So the, for the tibialis posterior, the origin is the middle one-third of the posterior tibia and proximal two-thirds of the medial fibula. So right in this region here, and the insertion is two, three, and fourth uh, metatarsals, so go down to this region here. The action is inversion, remember bring the foot in, and plantar flexion of the foot. So remember plantar flexion like this. So you remember right in the center here, the popliteal fossa region, you have to pinch for the plantaris. Inch down from there is popliteus inch down from there is the tibialis posterior. So for the tibialis posterior, it will just actually just refer right down to the ankle region. So right in the Achilles tendon region, that's where the typical referral is for the tibialis posterior. And then for the flexor digitorum longus, so for the flexor digitorum longus, that's more on the medial side here, but you have to go underneath the gastri gastronemius and the soleus region to actually locate the flexor digitorum longus. So the origin is the middle third of the posterior surface of the tibia up here, and the insertion is plantar surface of the dorsal um, four phalanges down to here. So for the flexor digitorum longus, you've got to kind of hook underneath. It's about the medial condyle of the femur, 
and go down a couple inches and you got to kind of hook it underneath it there. So for the, the referral for this is the bottom of the foot. So that's a typical referral for the flexor digitorum longus. And then for the flexor hallucis longus, basically what we want to do is um, the lateral malleolus and then knee halfway and just a little bit posterior. Um, that's where you're going to locate the flexor hallucis longus trigger point. So the origin is the distal two-thirds of the posterior fibula. Insertion is the base of the large toe. Um, you remember another name for it is hallucis, um, just like the name of it, flexor hallucis longus. So flexes large toe and assists plantar flexion. Remember plantar flexion like this and inversion. So it brings it in then, okay? So, and the typical referral for the flexor hallucis longus is the bottom of the great toe then too, okay? So that's the typical referral for that. So if they're having problems, um, concentrate on that. But the most lateral muscle here is the pronius muscles, okay? As we get into those, pronius longus, pronius um, brevis, and pronius tertius. So those are the three muscles that we're going to be concentrating on for the total lateral. So you can use that as a landmark to actually locate these areas then. Okay, next one is the gastronemius. This is a um, lot of um, clients will actually know, they'll actually heard of this name before. So the origin is the posterior surface of the medial and lateral condyle of the femur, right up in this region. And insertion is Achilles tendon region. Okay, so it actually here, it kind of bellies out and kind of connects down to here. So um, action is plantar flexion, like this, and also assist in knee flexion, like this. So there's actually four trigger points um, for the gastrocnemius. One here, oh, so you find the popliteal area, just like an inch down, here and here are two of them. And then go down an inch or so, and here and here. But this one right here, the medial side, the lower one, is actually has a better referral. So it'll actually go down to the arch region, that's a typical referral for the gastrocnemius. But these other three, here, here, and here, will actually just refer around to that region. That's all I do. Then the soleus, that's um, the origin is the head and proximal one-third of the posterior fibula and medial border and soleal line of the tibia. So right around here is the um, origin. And the insertion is also the Achilles tendon. So both the gastrocnemius and the soleus both have the same insertion. The action is plantar flexion of the ankle. So again, the gastrocnemius and soleus both have plantar flexion of the ankle, so that's the action. So what we're going to do is we find the head of the fibula, just go like an inch down, and that's one trigger point, and then we'll just refer down for the actual pain. And for the other trigger points, um, you want to actually feel the Achilles tendon here, and once you really can't feel it anymore, it's directly center. That's a big one that can actually mimic um, plantar fasciitis. Um, it can actually mimic those kind of problems, so it actually can go down to the heel region. And then there's another one, the same area, but just a little bit lateral. Now it can actually go up to the, the sacrum region. That's where it could technically go, but a lot of um, people don't get that actual referral. So again, most referrals will actually go downwards. That's a typical referral for those areas then. For the pronius muscles, they're the ones that are totally lateral here. So what you want to basically do is kind of cross fiber friction over that to locate the kind of tight band in that region. So the origin is the head of the proximal two-thirds of the lateral surface of the fibula and lateral condyle of the tibia. So right up in this area. And the insertion is the plantar surface of the medial um, cuneiform and the first metatarsal. And the action is eversion and it's this plantar flexion of the ankle. So plantar flexion, you remember like this, okay? Eversion and bring it out, okay? And for 
the trigger points, you want to find the origin area, just go down a couple inches, and that will actually refer down to the ankle region. And for the brevis, that the origin is the distal two-thirds of the lateral surface of the fibula. So right up in here, an insertion is lateral surface of the fifth metatarsal, it goes down to here, and the action is the eversion and the cis plantar flexion of the ankle also. So those um, about halfway or so, that's the trigger point for the brevis. And again, that will actually go down to this region too. And then there's uh, the other one is the tertius. So you feel the lateral um, malleolus here. Just go up a couple inches and that one will actually refer around this area. So it's a big one to actually concentrate on if somebody comes in um, with a chronic sprained ankle. So sometimes it can mimic those kind of problems constantly. So again, you're going to have to do a lot of stretching in that region, also a lot of massage to actually work those regions out then. So again, the most lateral ones then here is the peroneus uh, muscles. Most lateral here is uh, tensor fascia lata. Okay. Most medial one in the thigh region is the gracilis. Um, posterior one, uh, muscles are the adductors and the uh, anterior ones are the quadriceps. Then, okay.